Hiya five, welcome to chapter two of The Day I Fell Into a Fairy Tale with the permission from the publishers Simon & Schuster. So, if you remember yesterday uh, and the day before, so in our prologue, a supermarket has appeared from what was a molehill and now Lana and her mother are off to shop at this new supermarket that has appeared from nowhere. Lana's been upset that her brother is too busy studying for exams at senior school. So let's see what's going to happen. Chapter 2. If there was one thing to say about Little Hillcott, the village where Lana lived, it was this. It never changed. As they drove down the hill from their cottage, everything she saw was achingly familiar. There was the same old red post box, standing sentry outside the village shop. And there was the same old row of crooked houses, threatening to collapse onto the tiny village school. Last of all came Hillcott House, with its high yew hedge, which every summer the Gatcombe family hosted the village fate. But as they made the turn out onto the common, Lana could scarcely believe her eyes. Her mother was right, there! Where yesterday Lana was sure there had been nothing but grass was the most enormous new supermarket. A fresh tarmac road swept them off the lane and through a neat brick arc into a colossal car park with trees and shrubbery planted in orderly fashion. Well, what do you think? asked Lana's mother, parking in one of the newly marked out bays and turning off the engine. Where did all this come from? asked Lana, gazing up at the shiny new building. I don't know. I suppose they must have been building it through all the bad weather when everyone was indoors. Although how did it go how did how they did it with no one noticing? Lana's mother trailed off, looking puzzled. Anyway, shall we go and take a look around? They both climbed out of the car and headed to the entrance. Lana's mother unhitched the first in an enormous line of brand new shopping trolleys and swished it through the automatic doors. By the time Lana caught up with her, she was already loading her trolley with bumper packs of toilet roll. Look at this, her mother cooed. 48 rolls for the price of 24, and it's three ply. We need to snap this up while we've still got the chance. As soon as word gets out, this place will be rammed. That's great, replied Lana, trying to sound enthusiastic. But do we really need that much toilet roll? What's this? asked her mother in an a weed voice. Buy 19 boxes of aluminium foil and get the 20th free? That's unbelievably good value. Can I go and find the book section? asked Lana. That can't be right, muttered her mother in a world of her own. 36 bags of barbecue briquettes for the price of 30? I wonder if that's a misprint. Lana was about to say that they didn't have a barbecue, but thought better of it. And while her mother continued shopping, she quietly slipped away. Oh, Mr. Page. Here we go. Grimm's, it seemed, was enormous. After wandering aimlessly through a huge fruits and vegetables section, Lana found herself marooned in a never-ending row of baked goods that finally led to jams and preserves, which merged into biscuits and cereals before making her way through the frozen ready meals aisle and finding herself back at fruits and vegetables. The shelves and fridges that bordered the aisles were double her height, and Lana began to lose hope of ever finding the book section. She thought about asking for directions, but not only were there no other customers, she couldn't see any staff either. The tills were empty, and there was no one behind the deli. The pharmacy and the cafe were silent. For one brief moment, Lana thought she spotted someone stacking the freezers, but it turned out to be her mother, loading her overflowing trolley with boxes of frozen pizza. Lana was about to give her book search, give up her book search, when she heard a peculiar scuffling noise that seemed to be coming from an aisle towards the far end of the store. Fiddlesticks! rasped a high nasal voice. Rickety snickety fiddlesticks! Curious, Lana crept forward. There, standing on tiptoe, arms outstretched, struggling to place a large red leather bound book on a high shelf, was an extremely odd looking man. He was roughly Lana's height, but looked much older. As old as her... Ooh. Grandpa. And he was dressed in a maroon boiler suit with a smart gold trim. His eyes were beady and brown, his nose and ears were enormous, and his large bald head was speckled with warts. Well, don't just stand there, child, he barked at her. Help me! Lana leapt forward and placed her hands on the wide spine of the book, either side of the man's. His fingernails were long and yellow. P 
Push! strained the little old man. Harder! Lana focused all her effort, but the book was extraordinarily heavy. Before she really knew what was happening, she toppled backwards and found herself pinned to the floor, with the book sprawled open across her chest. You dropped it! he spat. Sorry, said Lana, squirming out from underneath. I did try my best. As she spoke, her eye caught one of the illustrations. It was of a witch with a long nose and a sharp chin, surrounded by a tangled forest. No peeking, snarled the little old man, snatching the book. His face was level with hers, and Lana could see tiny white bristles on the end of his nose. I'm putting it on a high shelf away from nosy children like you. He was so defensive that Lana instantly wanted to know more about the book. Why does it need to be out of reach, she asked. What's in it? Fairy tales, replied the old man, hugging the book to his chest, as if he was worried that Lana might try to take it from him. Fairy tales? Now Lana was really interested. Can I see it, she asked. I'm allowed to buy a book as a treat, and I love fairy tales. Not like these you don't, he sound frowning, frowning at her. These are proper fairy tales, centuries old, much too scary for you. You should give the, that one a go instead. He pointed to a dull-looking picture book on the lowest shelf. It's called The Little Tugboat Who Tried. A big ship breaks down and a little tugboat tries to pull it to shore. Except the big ship is very heavy, almost too heavy for the little tugboat. And what happens? asked Lana. Well, he keeps trying, said the little old man, and eventually he manages it. Right, said Lana, thinking that either the story wasn't very interesting, or the man wasn't telling it quite right. Trust me, he said, pushing Lana towards the picture book. You'll be much happier with this. Look, see? Lots of bright, friendly, safe pictures. He turned away from Lara, and standing on his tiptoes again, he hoisted the big red fairy tale book onto the highest shelf he could reach. There, out of harm's way. That's better. And without another word, he disappeared out of the aisle and round the corner. Lana waited for a moment. Then, after a quick look around, she stretched up, pulled the red book down from the shelf, and then hurried off to find her mother. If the little old man was so determined to keep the fairy tale from her, then they must be good. As soon as Lana was gone, the man peered back round the corner, a tiny smile on his face. If you want a child to read something, he whispered to himself, tell her it's forbidden. Mm -hmm. What on earth have you got there? asked her mother at the checkout. There was no one at the till, but she had piled everything from her trolley high on the conveyor belt anyway. It's a book of fairy tales, said Lana proudly. I'd like it as my treat, please. Oh, said Lana's mother, and sneezed six times in quick succession. Dust, she croaked, and sneezed another eleven times. Are you sure this is for sale? It looks very old. Um, began Lana. Can I help you? said a familiar voice, and Lana's mother jumped. There, sitting by the till, was the little old man. Except now he had dark brown moustache and was wearing a white-coloured shirt with a maroon waistcoat, a maroon and gold necktie, and a gold pillbox hat. Hello, said Lana's mother. My daughter would like this book, but there's no price on it. Oh, would she? he asked, fixing Lana with a stare. How old is she? Nine, announced Lana. A young nine or an old nine? I'm sorry, asked Lana's mother. What difference does that make? These fairy tales are not suitable for a young nine. An old nine, maybe. I see, said Lana's mother, who really didn't like being told what she could or could not do by anyone, let alone strangers. She opened the book and skimmed the contents page. Oh yes, she said, smiling. I used to love these stories when I was little. We'll take them, please. As you wish, madam, said the little old man. But don't say I didn't warn you. That'll be seventeen pence. Lana's mother looked at him blankly. But with your introductory discount, he said with a breezy smile, I can do it for eleven. Once Lana and her mother had left the supermarket, the little old man grinned to himself once more. And if you want an adult to buy something, he muttered, make it cheap. Good idea. Right, I think that is the end, yep, of chapter two. So, I will see you tomorrow for chapter three. Bye!